Hello, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the uh, Morning Edge. You're listening to the Morning Edge. I hope, I hope everybody's having a great Friday. I am having an okay Friday, and it has nothing to do with the markets right now. Um, the markets are fine. I'm just, I can't believe I'm just shaking my head. Anyway, um, happy Friday. Thank God it's Friday. I'm going to drink like a bottle of whiskey tonight, I think is what I'm going to do. Um, okay. Yes, a whole bottle. Anybody care to join me? Ingmar says in Germany, the mood is explosive. What does that mean? Explosive. How? Explosive like good or explosive bad? Brock said, good luck, Blake. <laughs> don't, don't wish me luck. Wish my liver luck. Uh, oh, uh, Ingmar says, pandemic management turning out to be carried out so poorly. People losing faith in government action. Well, that's globally, right? Yeah. Don't worry. Soon you'll be like the United States and you, you, we're, we're over it. Um, I, my, uh, I was talking to one of my best friends. Him and like four families are going to uh, uh, Mexico this weekend um, and they're renting a house and all partying. So, I mean, look, if we can do it, you can do it, right? All right, let's talk about, let's talk about what's happening in the markets that actually do matter right at this moment so I can stop being so irritated. Um, let's look at yields. Yields are ripping. 30-year yields breaking out. The market's taking notice of this, guys. So I'm, I'm going to tell you, if this continues, we are going to see risk off. We are going to see risk off. And that's, you know, I mean, it, it just yields are going to, this is the market forcing the Fed to do something because stocks will start to sell off. And then what's, and, and guess what's going to happen? Now, I mean, I'm going to tell you the, 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 the progression of what happens here. Okay. Yields go up. Stocks come down. The Dow will be down or you know the nasdaq whatever will be down 20 25 percent off the highs then guess what happens after that guess what happens after that you got it brock yep then the fed goes wait shoot we can't we can't actually raise rates i know the market's trying to force us to raise rates as yields go up and you know you we, we get the 10-year or the 30-year yield gets back to like three and a half percent. Like you imagine this happening in the next two weeks. Yields do this. You go to the S&P, the S&P does this. Yeah, it's probably about right, 20%. We see a 20% decline in stocks, yields rally to three and a half percent because they just take off because look, we're reopening, right? It's everything's great and fantastic. And, uh, and, and we're going to have this big boom. So why, why are 30 year yields down here? And why are people getting, why are people getting a 30 year loan at qualifying at 3% right now? They should be paying 5%, right? Right, 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 right. Then stocks sell off, yields rip. The Fed has to do something. And what Brock said happens. They do yield curve control. Then you see the stock market. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably like fast forwarding a couple of, uh, couple of months or whatever, um, maybe a couple of weeks. So the NASDAQ does this. Then we do yield curve control, then stocks do that, and then they do that, <laughs> right? Right. We get a sell-off. It's like it, you know, gets our, you know, people all worried because yields are ripping. Uh, Fed does yield curve control. It shoots us up to all-time highs and then some, and then the market realizes, holy crap, the Fed's actually doing 
stuff they shouldn't be doing and they're 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 adding so much liquidity to the market oh my god something's obviously wrong and then the market's just crap completely i i'm i'm elongating probably what what might take several months to happen in a couple of arrows but and i'm being obviously a little exaggerated at this point but guys I just think 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 through this through because what's happening is yields are moving um and that's basically the market saying look things you know we got we got it all clear i mean you know we're, we got stimulus coming we've got uh reopening uh, i just saw something uh on twitter about uh about you know uh the ntsa you know checking so many people in it's like pre-pandemic records number of people flying uh we, we're going to have this massive reopening, massive, you know, why are yields low? That's the question that the market's asking. Why are yields low? And so yields are going to start to rally. It's going to start to weigh on stocks. Stocks are going to go, holy crap. Yields are coming up. Conditions are going to tighten. You know, stocks will come down. Then the Fed's going to go, oh, no, they're not going up. We're going to do yield curve, curve control. And then stocks are going to bounce like a bat out of hell. And in the meantime... What's probably going to happen with the dollar is you're going to see the dollar, you know, yields go up, stocks go down, dollar goes what? Dollar goes rip, rip roaring through the 200 day moving average. We go up to like 95, as Dale was talking about. Then we do yield curve control. Then we crap the bed. And then once we hit new all time, new 52 week lows in the, in the dollar index, uh, the market goes Oh my God, we're going to implode. Then the dollar goes screaming back up again. It's 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 like I come talk to me in about six months and let's see what happened after what what happened with all this. Um, I'm just obviously having fun on a Friday trying to think some of this through in exaggerated form, but I I, I hope you guys get what I'm saying. You know, and especially more 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 or less about near term what's happening with yields. I think yields going higher is really going to impact negatively in stocks. Now what the what the Fed decides to do about it, I mean we're all hell bent on thinking that the Fed's going to induce yield curve control. We we all believe that, right? That's what the well, I say that's what ever the market believes, right? There's going to be yield curve control coming. I'm not necessarily sure that that's going to be the case. Why can't the Fed let the market free float a little bit, you know, especially if you look at like the S and P 500 and I'm, I'm again, let me get rid of these exaggerated numbers. Um, let, let's just think about, you know, the S and P 500 and what we've done since the pandemic, uh, you know, we've basically the S and P's doubled, right. And the economy is doing well. I mean, we're creating jobs seeing some inflation, um, you know, if the stock market really started to sell off, is that a catalyst to actually start doing yield curve control? No, maybe, maybe the, you know, the yields start to go up and they're like that, look, yields are going up and that's a function of our economy is actually looking better and better all the time. And they let yields rise and then they start to actually talk about raising rates. That's probably the more realistic expectation. And then what happens there? You know, S&Ps actually do really come down for real. I mean, you know, we, we're at 3,900 right now and, you know, we actually end up trading closer to like, you know, 3,000, you know, or 3,100. And, you know, we start finding a new norm down there. That, I mean, because remember, we are going to have to get, at some point, we're going to have to let, you know, we're going to have to tighten rates and we're going to have to, you know, the Fed's going to want to let, um, you know, Fed's going to want to let uh, uh, rates go higher so they have some sort of tools in their toolbox again, you know, for for the next crisis. You're going to hear that talked about probably, you know, in a month's time. So, uh, uh, Mar said, what does it tell us about the importance of retail sales consumption? You remember this is mantra for the 80s for a strong economy. Oh, yeah. And I think, you know, I, I think we're going to see a lot of that over the next several months. I mean, think about the pent up demand everywhere globally. You know, we've had a year of lockdowns. And I, I mean, I, 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 it's hard for me to actually talk like this, because it, where I live, nothing's changed. Really, nothing's changed. 
um, minus uh, my kids can't do a couple of uh, sporting events, but you know, businesses are open. Everybody wears masks. Uh, well, actually I take that back. Not everybody wears masks, but um, you know, we're, we're also the COVID capital of the world, but you know, what the hell we're open. Everybody's moving around. The economies are moving, but I, you know, talking about the rest of the world, you know, everybody's pent up. They've been sitting at home, they're locked down. Um, and you know, you're going to, you know, people want a vacation. They're going to want to spend th- money on things. You got the UK economy. It's gone through five years of a Brexit. Now, then in the COVID, they're going to be wanting to buy cars and blah, blah, blah. You know, so, uh, you know, I, th- I think we're going to see a lot of that spending come back. Okay. So anyway, I'm talking about a lot of big picture stuff, but what I need to do is get through the uh, bias chart because really I'm, very irritated right now. So I just need to get through this and it's, and it has nothing to do with you guys, by the way, nothing. Um, okay. Here's the Euro. So Euro 38% retracement held. And you're like, what 38% retracement, this 38% retracement, that one of the drop. Um, so while we're below 120, you got to, you know, be thinking that, you know, we're consolidating and drifting lower. And, you know, especially if yields continue to go up and stocks are weak, um, they stay weak, then we might see this, uh, this drift lower towards, you know, the, the teens, which I think ultimately is where we're going. But um, uh, near term, as I told you guys yesterday, we had to get above 120 before I could say, all right, the Euro's heading to 121, 60 or up here, but we're struggling at a 38% retracement. So if we're gonna struggle at a 38% retracement, then the realistic um, you know, chart pattern we're looking at right now is a you know, flag pattern, right? That's it. So if we got a flag pattern here that's developing, whether it looks like this or this, I mean, if that really plays out, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to be more of something like this, but hell, I've been proved wrong many a time. So, you know, this is, looks like what we're trying to develop right now. So what does that mean to us today? That means that um, you know, today's lows are probably fairly important at this moment. So I'm going to say 119 and 120. Okay. Okay. Let's not try to get, you know, let the horse get in front of the cart, the cart in front of the horse. The horse should be in front of the cart. <laughs> Let's not let the cart get in front of the horse. So 119, I think is going to be key support. 120 is key resistance. Oh, shoot, I did type the wrong thing. Sorry. I think we stay bearish while, we're, while it's below 120 now, okay? I mean, we just have to get above 120 for it to, to, to take the bearish designation off. I know yesterday I said we have to get back above this uh, 119.50, but ba- basically, or 119.60, basically that rejection of the 38% retracement has me thinking that we have to just, you know, just continue to focus on more of the, 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 the downside stocks open in one minute. Let's get through this cable cables weak right now. Um, uh, uh, you know, was it the overnight GDP numbers that, that are weighing on, on, on the sterling? I mean, or it was manufacturing production numbers. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know, but the pound is not acting well. So I guess we can do this for now. Something like that for now, but I, I'm not, I'm not convinced that, you know, that that's, that's the right thing to be looking at. 
I do think that we're going to have to focus more on support down here at 138, uh, 137.80, because that would be not only these lows, but um, uh, I'm just going to leave that line there for now. Uh, I'm. We have a trend line here that you can think about right now, which would be 138.50. Okay, so I'll write down, down that. I'm going to write down a couple levels. So 137.80. 138, oops, shoot, 138.40 or 50. And then obviously below that we have, um, we have 137.50, which is probably the most important support, you know, to, to pay attention to. All right, uh, let's look at um, resistance is going to be 140. That's also the 50% retracement, right? Horizontal resistance. So that comes in at 140.10, 140 140.15, I think is what we've been writing. That's key resistance. I'm going to keep us in range. Aussie, um, I'm going to keep the Aussie in range for now, but... I thought we'd make it all the way up to finish the double top. We'd make it all the way up to here. The problem is, is if the Aussie slips below the 7720, because if we, if we do break below 7720, then we should trade back down to these lows here. So I'm going to write down 7720 as being kind of important support today. Okay. And then uh, resistance is obviously 78 cents now. Friday, try not to get too terribly, you know, directional with stuff, but um, Kiwi trading heavy, 38% retracement held, just like the, uh, the Euro. So again, this is, this is one of those situations where now it starts to get a little dicey for Kiwi longs, you know, cause now you're like, okay, well, shoot, we just, um, we just held that 38% retracement. So now you know, is this a flag developing? I mean, because that's the way I see it currently. And if that is the case, then we're going a lot lower if we break down. You know, I'm not saying that that that's happening. I'm just saying that that is what we're building. So uh, support today, I'll write down um, 71.30. Resistance is obviously 30, uh, 72.40. So and this is going to be important. 72.40 is resistance. And this is a 71.30 is support. Not great support either. Um, I, I, can't, I can't put it on bearish until we get through the 71 cent level, as you guys know. But, you know. But it's 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 leaning towards you know going into a bearish des designation now let's talk about the dollar canadian um so we had this huge canadian jobs report huge ginormous i mean that was ridiculous right and that is just silly um 259,000 jobs forecasted at 75,000 i don't see any revisions there unemployment rate a full percentage point lower than expecta expectations. Why shouldn't you short the dollar Canadian? That's I'm that I'm thinking, I'm saying that based on the data that came out. If I wasn't looking at the charts and I was just sitting here going, "What well, I need to be buying Canadian dollars right now," based on what just was released, you know that just has to happen. So what happens when it doesn't go down? Because that's when that's when we're at risk of squeezing, right? So I, I'm going to write down 125 and then I'm going to put an asterisk next to 125.90 because if we get back above these spikes here, we should, I, I'm actually going to write down 125.80. If for some reason, and, and I, oh, and I, I was going to, I was going to tweet this, but I'd rather just tell you this. I'd rather not share it with everybody in the world. Um, but let me write this down. 
what's that? Uh, tenure is tenure. Is that breaking out? Oh crap, it is. We're at new highs on the day, the tenure. Look out, guys. I mean, yields are going, the yields are yields are gonna try to break out. So I mean, 30 years breaking out, tenure. I'm gonna put an alarm at the highs because I, you know, I'm I have to do this so I can pay attention to things as they're going on, but I've you know obviously got to focus on whatever I'm analyzing at the time. Let me go back to the dollar Canadian and let me just say what I was gonna say because I need to finish my thoughts here. And then I say 120, that's not right. I'm sorry, that was 125.85. And this is gonna be 125. Okay. And I'm gonna just keep us in range for now. And I'm just gonna do that because I, I, I'm fearful that the dollar Canadian is gonna break higher. And here's the thing. I, over the last 20 years of me trading currencies, and I have been trading currencies for ex exactly 19 years, I'm sorry. I, I switched over in 2002 to trade currencies almost exclusively back in 2002. So it's been almost 20 years that I've been trading currencies. In the last 19 years, I can, I can almost, I cannot tell you how many times I have seen Canadian data released on a Friday, whether it's jobs data, inflation data, or even interest rate decision days, where you think one thing should be happening in the, and this is why they call it the loony, you think one thing should be happening in the Canadian, and the exact opposite will happen. Like, there's like no, there's nothing, there's no clear signal from an economic data standpoint right now, nothing more clear than um, shorting the U.S. or buying Canadian dollars based on this data. There is nothing, nothing. Like I look at that data and it's like, yeah, okay, wholesale sales trade came down a little bit, but look, upward revision, capacity use, utilization, upward revision, beat numbers. This, you have to buy Canadian dollars today. I mean, if I wasn't, if I didn't know what I knew and I didn't look at the charts the way that I look at them, that would be my thought. It's like, dude, I got to be buying Canadian dollars. And I can't tell you how many times that that just get that, that just gets upended. And I'm not saying that, you know, you should be buying dollar Canadian right at this moment. I'm just saying, if we start getting above these highs, you will see a short squeeze. If we get above these highs. Okay. And, you know, I mean, look, trying to bet against the stock market and bet against, you know, bet on higher yields. And it's been a, it's been a losing battle, but that doesn't mean that it's always going to be that way. Dollar Swiss, you know, is the dollar Swiss going to like rising yields? I was really hoping we get to this trend line. I mean, it should, it has, right? So if we get above 9370, how many people get squeezed out there? I mean, it's bullish. And I think you got to buy dips down to 92.70 now, if we can get it. Dollar yen. Uh, I'll come back to the Nor Norway. Look, dollar yen. This is daily chart. Two thousand fifteen to today. Here we are. What happens if we break one hundred nine twenty eight? One hundred nine. What was that high there from that day? It is one hundred nine twenty two. So one hundred nine two zero. Man, Dow is ripping right now. The Dow is ripping and NASDAQ selling off. Value versus growth. It's alive. 
It's alive. I don't know if you should be buying the Dow or selling the NASDAQ right now, or maybe what I said before is that's probably one of the better pairs trades out there is, you know, long Dow, short NASDAQ. <laughs> Unfortunately, I shorted the Dow earlier. <laughs> like I didn't think yields were going to break out like they have. That's okay. I mean, it's, it's just a small position. I'm not getting carried away with it, but still it's like, yeah, I should be doing the opposite of that. Um, all right. US dollar, Norwegian Krona. Um, another one held support. Remember, we had false breakdowns here. So I think 840 is support. Resistance is at uh, 8... Uh, we'll have to write down this number again. 855, because it was 856 yesterday, I think. 854? That's 840 and we're range bound. Okay. Um, dollar Mexican peso. So, you know, if you, if, you know, you read the analysis this morning, I sent out, we just, you know, this underside of the trend lines challenged, challenged us so that, and that's where we stopped. So, um, but if we break nine, uh, 2095, then we, we have this next reason. We, but we may be de developing a head and shoulder pattern here. So that's just something to think about. Um, I'm going to write down 2095 as resistance today. Uh, we held the 618. Which came in at which comes in at twenty uh, sixty six. I was really glad to see that happen. Um, I, you know, I was talking to the guys in the chat room, and, and uh, you know, and I've got dollar Mexican peso long exposure, and I haven't added to it because um, I am a little worried about it, setting up a head and shoulder pattern. But I got asked, you know, like, where are you really worried about it, Blake? And I'm like, around eight fifty, because if we broke through this, you know, six one eight, I'm going to start being concerned with my you know, long dollar Mexican peso exposure as I've been building it long from this, you know, this base here. So I, you know, it, it'll concern me if we start, you know, really cracking lower here, but it's holding up. And one of the reasons why I think it's holding up is because yields are going up. So with the yields going up, you know, it's, it is starting to have a little bit of an influence here. So um, anyway, 2056. This is really important support. Uh, let's talk about the dollar. The dollar index. Here's the dollar index rallied off the 38% retracement really, really aggressively. Um, but now is the dollar index bull flagging? Yeah, let's see if we can break resistance today. Let's let's see if we can break 92 today. If we break 92, I'm gonna flip this back to bullish. It's a range right now, but I'm gonna flip this to bullish if we can if we can show us a bull flag is developing next week. Okay. So support being 9140. And that's uh, bulls are gonna want to hold that. Okay. Well, a little dollar pullback here as stocks are, you know, recovering. See, I just don't think people believe that yields are going to go higher here. I mean, I know they're going higher. I know they're, but you look at the 10 year at the highs. I think a lot of people are like, nah, they're, we're not breaking that. You know, I know the 30 years just, put in a higher high, but I don't think people are believed that the 10 year is going to do it. I think the 10 year actually has to break highs 
in order for people to be believing that yields are really going higher here. Remember, Dave Tepper, he said, he said, bonds are bottoming here, all right? All right. Um, let's go to the S&P. So what do we do with the S&P? Well, these highs are obviously important. So that resistance is going to be 3960. Um, we might just be in a bigger range. That's going to be pretty important. I think we have to stay bullish while we're outside of the triangle. So that means support's going to be right here. Which will be 3880. I think while we're above, what is that? 3880? While we're above 3880, you got to stay bullish. Okay. Gold, trading ridiculously heavy. So um, I, I'm gonna write. Uh, I'm gonna write down. Didn't we write down yesterday? Seventeen. Hold on. Let's find out. Sixteen eighty. Seventeen sixty. Yeah, I, I think we can actually. Now that we've really stalled here, we can actually write that down. Uh, Seventeen forty and then 1680 and and we got we got we got to stay bearish now i mean while we're below that 1760 so i'm going to write down 1740 then 1760 and then and then 1680 i don't know no one's seen that movie but me zero people zero What is that? Uh, what is that? Um, um, what is that uh, movie? Um, uh, it's the worst movie in the world. And then, and then, and then, and then, when they're going through the uh, Chinese uh, fast food drive-through, dude, where's my car? That, and, and I know many of you have heard me say this before. I have never. That I mean, that is the only time in my life I've ever walked out of a movie theater ever in my life but that part <laughs> stuck with me <laughs> so ridiculous okay let's talk about silver um so here's silver uh i think um we have to write down 26 80 27 and then 25 and let's just leave it at that i you know i don't know what to do with silver i i really don't know range Bitcoin. Now I, I'm going to talk about this. And then I had a question from Steph asked about the Euro yen. Let's talk, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, Bitcoin. So in the event that stocks come down, I think you got to be careful with Bitcoin here, considering we didn't hit new highs. Now, uh, you know, there's the big, um, you know, there's the big idea that, um, uh, you know, st st stimulus checks are coming, you know, people are going to invest. I, I think the the number that like Deutsche Bank came up with, and and I think other banks have come up with about 200 billion, 180 billion, 170 billion of the money that's dispersed in the United States is going to go into the markets. Because I think, uh, I think what's going to hit, um, people like you know people that get stimulus is going to be around uh, 400 somewhere around like 380 or something like that and then half of that or 60 percent of that they figure is going to be put in the market so that's why you know you got to buy stocks and then you got to buy bitcoin because people are going to get direct deposits and they're going to go into crypto but you know that is uh, as i've explained to you guys before 
that is the ultimate um, transfer of wealth, right? So when you know you get retail buying all of these assets, you got all these you know big money who's you know institutional money that's been buying Bitcoin since you know we broke twenty thousand. Why aren't they selling it up here at sixty? You know I've made triple on my money, or I've made a, I've made a, you know two hundred percent return on my money. Yeah, why not unload it up here? you know, as retails buying it, because it's not mom and pop anymore. You know, it's not mom and pop. The retail is now, um, which used to be pre-internet was mom and pop. Now, people buying is really going to be more, more or less, um, you know, it like, like, you know, investors, you know, investors are, are really, you know, getting investors like, you know, young retail investors. Those, that's the new mom and pop. So anyway, if Bitcoin can't take out these highs, then we're at risk, you know, especially if stocks start to come down, yields go up and stocks come down. I mean, we're, we're at risk of, you know, breaking lower. And I, what I hope happens, uh, to be frank with you guys, is just this, you know, just I hope we get a double top and we get a move back down to 29,000 and then we can get long, you know, after cracks 30,000 and everybody's like, oh, it's going back to zero, you know, and, then you just buy it down there. I, I, I kind of think that's what the risk is right now. Or let me just put it, let me rephrase that. That's like my hope, my hope. My hope is that that happens. Um, but resistance obviously is at 58,000. And, and I don't know, or 58,200. And I don't know if, uh, I, I don't think, I don't know if that is um, going to be able to hold today. Because look, if the market gets it in its in its head that you know everybody's going to be buying crypto this weekend, then you know maybe it is the catalyst that drives us higher. Maybe support uh, while we're above, let's call it fifty two thousand five hundred. We have to stay bullish. Period. We get below fifty two five hundred, then then it's like uh, then then we're now really at risk of of you know selling off, right? Um, okay, so Steph asked about the euro yen. Um, I, I actually sold some euro yen this morning. So I sold it at 97. Now, let me pull up the chart here. So the euro yen is up against a multi year massive. Here's a monthly chart. Here's a, here's a monthly chart. It's at a massive um, resistance, right? It's at massive uh stelios posted this chart today and look we can break out we can but it's like okay well i know what the risk is right that trend line comes in right around you know 130 50 gets above there then you know you have to you have to get out you got the 127 percent extension right in the 40s so it's like okay well you know you're risking 50 60 pips to make what well maybe a move back down to the trend line here which would be you know 127 128 by the time we get there maybe 127 and change that's entirely possible i mean this is in my opinion very good risk reward counter trend right so you're you're risking one to make what is that well i'll tell you One thirty sixty. Whoops, shoot. Thirty sixty. Entry one thirty, uh, roughly. So, uh, profit one twenty eight. Let's just use that. So your risk reward ratio is three to three three point three. So, you know that's that's a good risk reward ratio in my opinion, right? And, but you're going counter trend. So you can't, you know, this is obviously the trend is higher. So you can't take a full position in doing that. You know, you got to take a smaller position, but risking one to make three or three plus. All right. I'll take those all day long. You know, if, if I get stopped out, I get stopped out, you know, but you have to take that type of risk reward when you see it. Um, okay. Okay. Let's go into uh, Amir asked about platinum. I should let Steve talk about platinum because I only look at it because Amir asked about it. So that's it. 
So I think last time we talked, I drew two things for you. I said, hey, you know, maybe a, a, a move back down to the 50% retracement or maybe even a deeper retracement down to, uh, you know, this breakout point, right? Neither one has happened since then. Probably the last time I talked to you, we were probably trading around here. Or maybe, I don't know, when, when was the last time you asked me? Uh, maybe if it was a week ago, then we did dip to the 50%. We actually almost dipped to the 618. So, um, yeah, I mean, we broke that trend line, but we bounced. So that trend line's not relative. This trend line's not relative. So um, it looks like now what's probably really important is this. Let's grab this line. I don't even know where that line comes from. Yeah, because, I mean, there's some breakout points here, some wicks, bodies, then wicks below. So this is obviously a really key support now. So that's it. I think while you're above there, you got to just be on the long side, right? So above this blue line. That's it. Okay. All right. Well, guys, um, good luck this week. Um, have a good weekend. Um, I hope uh, you guys yeah, have a wonderful and restful weekend. It's actually raining here today, which is rare. So I'm going to enjoy the cloudy days as I'm irritated. So you guys have a great one. Thank you so much for all your support. Steve is here with uh, Stelios. I'm maybe, I don't know. Uh, well, I'll nope. let these guys take over. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. 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 I've taken the snapshot, so you're free to go. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Blake. Bye bye. All right. So, looks like uh, yields are creeping higher, and uh, uh, equities seem to be selling off a little bit. But again, we're not at the end of the day, and you know we know what usually happens. Yeah. And, and the move in equities, I have to admit, even though ten-year uh, US has gone to one sixty-two, is not convincing. You know, it's not really going anywhere lower. I mean, the S and P is it's barely down. Nasdaq is obviously down a percent, but uh, yeah, but for the Nasdaq, but, you know, a percent yeah. is it was up four percent the other day, right? So it's yeah, not, exactly. Yeah. Three days ago, I mean, it, it had the best day of the yeah. year. So, so yeah, it's not it's not convincing yet. I'm afraid. I don't know what to do with it at the moment. You know, it's uh, you know, I think if if it is to summarize here, the uh, the conundrum is. Uh, what's happening with the dollar and risk assets is if there is more to go in this corrective move or if it's over, uh, the uh, short-term charts of the yields and even if the dollar, if you look, uh, open, still leave open the potential for the rebound to uh, expand even further um, because we, we held equivalent like potential bull flags. Um, but on the other hand, you know, there is still the fact that the dollar remains in a downtrend, uh, in a longer term downtrend. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy to say what's going to happen. Uh, I was hoping that this week, the price action would have been more, you know, decisive. Uh, and that, you know, we would continue to have like more volatile markets than we had last week. But, you know, volatility seems to have calmed down somewhat. So I guess we'll have to wait a few more days to get, you know, more clarity about, you know, is the dollar rebound over? Does it have more to run? Uh, and as we know, you know, risk assets are very important to uh, to that. By the way, we have data still, right? Uh Yes, is it Michigan or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's have a look. Any second now. Uh, yeah, better strong. than expected. Yeah, better yeah. than expected. Yeah, okay. Yeah, not really going to do much. Hmm. Yeah, I, I doubt we're going to see any fireworks from that. Uh... Yeah, I mean, no, definitely not. Yeah, we haven't seen with other data that are definitely more important, so no reason to believe. 
Yes. Um, okay, so having to do one year inflation uh, preliminary 3.1. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so, yeah, we have to wait for more clarity. Now, having to do with precious metals that we talked about before, we've had this, you know, great rebound from a, you know, key confluence of supports. On the other hand, we didn't manage to go through the first area of resistance this week. So, you know, uh, gold has held an important support, but on the other hand, the rebound hasn't managed yet to break any type of resistance. So we go back to what we were saying about the dollar. I mean, it's, you know, it's not certain what it's doing yet. Was it just consolidating uh, its recent move higher and it has more to run? Or does it want to roll over and continue lower? In which case, gold should not produce a lower low and we should, you know, head higher from there. Now, not much of a difference in the short term in silver, uh, although there is a big difference in the sense that silver never produced a new low. Um, the bearish case scenario for silver is, you know, we back tested this broken channel as uh, a resistance and it held. So somebody can say that against this trend line, you you can continue being short if, if that's what you're looking for in the short term. Having to do with um, platinum, uh, looked like a bull uh, flag breaking out back testing it as we speak so you know as long as it's holding it can continue higher of course you know can doll can the go can gold and silver move lower while platinum moves higher and not that easy to happen i mean it can overperform but you know going in the opposite direction is not obviously uh you know a very likely scenario now having to do with copper i said yesterday we broke out of this channel and um you know that remains to be the case uh, so, um, you know, uh, there is no real evidence why we should be uh, bearish despite all the divergences. Nickel clearly, con I think this clearly is some type of a bearish consolidation. Initially, I thought that we might see a little bit of a rebound uh, before we continue lower. But, you know, seeing this formation, I think that there is a good chance we're not even going to see a rebound. Uh, we're just going to, you know, break down from this consolidation and produce another leg to lower. So uh, nickel seems to be very, very weak at the moment. And, you know, that's not something uh, you can ignore. I mean, it's it's a very clear, uh, the markings are very clear on the chart. Crude remains very well bid. On the other hand, remains capped by this channel and momentum is still diverging. So... You know, clearly not something that we still have, that we already have evidence to fade. But on the other hand, you know, it's it's been a very, very, very long run. At some point, there needs to be some type of a proper correction. And we've, we haven't had that yet. So there is no risk reward in being long. Um, you know, so I guess some, somebody, I mean, I don't want to be short in general. I would want to be long in general, but this is not the level I'm looking for. So um, I, I think the best thing to do is wait for a decent correction and uh, be long if, if anything. Um, you know, we, Blake, talked ex extensively about USD CAD. I'm still monitoring USD NOC as well, near the lows, but it hasn't broken down from the, from the rectangle. Now, a rectangle on occasion can be a reversal formation. It can be, although, although most of the times it is a continuation uh, formation. One thing is for sure, a rectangle has the big benefit that it gives you two specific levels which, which, which don't change over time because they're horizontal and parallel, meaning, you know, at least we have the two key areas over which you can be bullish or under which you can be bearish anything in between more or less is noise so it's like 865 and like what is it 835 to 865 roughly that's the range within that range um i think it's just tropical consolidation we break down below it we should extend we break above it we might have built some type of a 
bottoming pattern and you know bigger rebound might be in the card before we can actually continue lower. Um, keep in mind that USD knock, especially for a currency, has moved you know a very big distance in, in a rather small period of time. At some point, it will also be in need of some kind of a um, correction. Anyhow, uh, those were a few comments. Let me have a look to see if you have any questions to cover. And I guess then we can call it a week. Uh, let me see. Euro, yen, okay, Blake answered that because it had to do with his pip. Uh, I'm short Kiwi Cad. I think that being short Kiwi Cad is not a bad idea. I'll show you why. It's been some time that since the last time I was asked about it, but that doesn't mean that I don't pay attention to it. So let me show it to you. This is what we drew last time we were looking at it, right? Uh, we had the breakout from the triangle uh, fulfilled the minimum expectation, which is a higher high. We, we got that. And then we reversed. We built a, an evening star formation. We dropped back below the triangle. And I had said that, you know, if we break down from the previous triangle strand line support, that's going to be a very best development, uh, you know, leading lower. We did break down. We back tested the trend line as the resistance. We reversed yesterday from it and look at it today. So, yeah, being short key we cut doesn't look bad. From a technical perspective, it looks like um, even again against yesterday's highs. I mean, I don't know when you actually shorted it, but I'm I'm pretty sure that if you shorted it, you know, quite some time ago, um, it's not a bad idea to put a stop loss above yesterday's high. I think that, you know, if this is to remain bearish, it shouldn't go over uh, yesterday's high. Let me see. What else we have? The IWM and IQ. Let's see. Here's the Russell looking a lot like the S&P, right? We had this like expanding triangle. We are at new highs. Having said that, keep in mind that RSI is seriously diverging. And if you remember, I had said before we even broke out, I said two things. One, that this looks very much like a corrective formation, which should lead to a new high. Check. We already got that. But the second thing I had said is that it looks like to me that any new high will come with a lot of RSI divergence. So far, this seems to be getting confirmed. Um, and I think that there is a decent possibility that we're going to get a proper correction following you know, the next push higher. Uh, upside targets, 236.6, the 127% extension of this corrective move, and 244.6, the 161.8% extension. I think that there is a very good chance that we're going to see a proper correct, corrective move after this leg higher uh, is over and done with. Um, so, you know, this is a legitimate breakout, but my intuition says that I shouldn't be buying it. Uh, Stelio, uh, there is a question for you by, by Hugo. I am uh, answering it already. Yes, Hugo, I will. Of course I will. Okay, perfect. Uh, now, there was a question about IQ. Whoop, that's not IQ though. Here, this is IQ. IQ, IQ. Oh, yeah. Phew. Ugly market. Ugly in the sense, in my opinion, more or less untradeable. You can see why, right? This has been trapped in this range for so long. Uh, we are at resistance. So that's something to keep in mind.
this initially looked like a corrective move lower. To be honest, we didn't see a lower low following it, but it didn't unfold as it was looking like last time we saw it, which was obviously a long time ago. Um, we are at resistance, so I think, you know, this is a pivot area here. We break above it, it's going to be like the first time uh, since we dropped down within it in September of 2018, we get rejected, we're back into the range. So, uh, you know, until we break out, you know, of course you can fade strength here. I mean, this zone has held so many times, it might hold once again. So, you know, you, you take your pick here. I don't know if you want to trade it short or long. I can tell you one thing. If you want to be long, uh, I don't think you should be buying it exactly here. You can see why. This resistance has capped price action, has been capping price action for two and a half years. Exactly two and a half years. So, you know, why, why bet against it? On the other hand, it breaks out. It should see some, some decent follow through. So I, I think we're going to find out soon what's happening here with AQ. Uh, okay. Great. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you, Steve. Oh no, we haven't. Oh. Uh, we had a question from Brock. Why CC? No idea what this is. Yield curve control. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah the acronym. I, so I it, there was some conversation. Yeah, yield curve control. Yeah. Now you know the you know yield curve control is a new, is not a new thing. But monetary policy keeps re-spinning around all their concepts and just giving them new fancy names. For example, theoretically speaking, the term uh, quantitative easing is something they came up with like, what is it now, Stelio, 13 years ago. Uh, yes. But in all, in all essence, it, it's a very, very, very old concept which they didn't want to use its original name because it, it didn't sound good. It's called debt monetization. So, you know, equivalently, yield curve control is another spin, uh, another chapter of the same book, uh, if you want my opinion. So uh, I have no doubt that at some point they're going to, you know, play that chapter as well for us, but it's one of the same. Debt monetization with a little bit of a twist uh, involved. So, you know, whatever. How do you see gold here? Um, my opinion hasn't changed about gold, and we're going to close with this. Uh, meaning, I'm very certain that the move lower is corrective. Uh, the characteristics of the move are undeniably corrective. Now, you know, is it over? Are we done? Did we actually find last week the low of this correction? You know, that's something you can't easily predict, right? Um, I, I would feel, you know, much better about saying that we might have found a low if we uh, end up breaking above this previous low at 1764. That's going to make me feel a lot more comfortable that we've seen the low. So, until that happens, I leave the possibility open that we might have, you know, more downside. Do I believe it's going to be a lot? No, I don't. Uh, for me, the path of least resistance in the long term and the bigger move to expect for is going to be coming to the upside. Now, you know, was the low 1683? I think nobody can answer that with certainty. As I said, for me, 1764 is a key area to tell me that, okay, most likely the correction is over and, you know, uh, there is a lot more upside coming because once this corrective move is done, I think there is a lot more upside coming. And not only for gold, for silver, for platinum, for the vast majority of um, uh, precious metals and commodities and anything with uh, intrinsic value. Uh, what is my expectation for Ethereum? Listen, you know that fundamentally speaking, I really don't believe in cryptocurrencies. Uh, that hasn't stopped me from being bullish when the 
technical information tells me I, I should be bullish. Uh, when we visited Ethereum, you know, uh, several days ago, I said that the rebound higher is likely part of a larger correction. Now, the problem with corrections, as I've said many times, is that it's very hard to predict how they're going to unfold. Are there going to be <clears throat> more corrections in time? Are there going to be more corrections in price? Um, you know, you can't be certain about it. I mean, this might be a simple one, two, three, uh, another leg lower and done. It might end up being more of a horizontal consolidation, perhaps like a larger triangle. Clearly, as you understand, uh, the more uh, a market corrects in time rather in price, uh, the more bullish it looks, right? So that's, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, that's more or less a universal truth. So I have to say that I'm very skeptical about buying Ethereum now, because as I said, I think we are within some type of a corrective move, which either has more to run in time, uh, a lot more to run in time, or at least in price. So uh, if, if, if gun to my head and if I had to do something with Ethereum, you know, as we speak, I would probably choose to be short instead of long. Um, you see there is some divergence with Bitcoin, right? I mean, Ethereum still below its lows. Bitcoin actually both yesterday and today tested the highs. So, but, but that doesn't change the fact that this might also be a larger corrective move, right? Who knows exactly how it might unfold? I mean, might be something simple, might be something more complex. By more complex, we, we might even have like an irregular, um, an expanded flat here. What would that mean? I mean, would look something like this. These are, you know, some of the more devious corrective moves, meaning you produce a higher high, everybody gets, you know, ultra bullish at the new highs. Then you reverse lower, you produce a lower low. Now you get everybody being bearish, calling that a false break higher. And then you reverse higher once again and continue the trend. So here is, for example, a possible outcome of the many, because uh, as I've said, you know, corrections can take many faces, right? And, you know, you need more price to, to, to be certain about it. Now, in the grand scheme of things, I do believe that you shouldn't be long as we speak in either of these two. I do believe that we are in some kind of a larger corrective move in both of them. So in my opinion, um, you know, depends on your time frame. You know, if you're looking to do something with them short term, you might even consider being short. If you're looking to, to have exposure longer term, I don't think this is the place you should be loading the boat. I, I think you'll, you'll get a better opportunity and get a, uh, get a better price to, to load up the boat. Uh, but it does look to me like they probably want to move higher eventually. Now, keyword being eventually. Um, okay, guys and girls, I wish you all a wonderful weekend. And as always, we'll be back on Monday. Bye-bye. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, cats, too. And see you, everybody, on Monday. Thank you, Stel. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.